Well, hello, everybody. It's been a long time since we have posted a video. We've been on a little bit of a break. And as you'll notice, we're in a brand new studio, which we have constructed using the the uh, greatest technology available <laughs> to us. Um, so we, well, we're excited to jump into a new series. And uh, today we're going to start a series called How to Vote Like a Christian, because we like to tackle very controversial things and make everyone upset at us in the comment section. That's so great. why not why not do it with politics? So as you know, if you're here in America, right, we have an election coming up. If you're not here in America, you might still know that. Um, <laughs> it's a, there's a lot going on here and just a, just kind of crazy stuff, assassination attempts, um, just wild stuff going at the border, hurricanes, all kinds of stuff leading up to this election that are influencing it, and we don't, we don't know how, right? So totally. I, our question today is we're looking at, you know, how do we vote? Well, I should say, sorry, we're going to do a, a few parts of this series. We're going to talk about kind of how do we think through these issues biblically. What we're not going to do is tell you you should vote for this candidate or that candidate. Um, that's just, I don't think that's really my role as a pastor, but it is my role to open God's Word, to tell you what it says, and to give you some principles for how to approach politics. Yep. And I think there are some answers that are better than others in this political season. So to start off this series, we're going to tackle this important question, which is, do Christians have to vote? Is it a requirement for Christians mm -hmm. to vote? How should we approach this whole task of casting our vote? So we have with us the legend himself, Mikey Johnson, who's going to help us with this. So Mikey, where do we start when we're looking at this question of, of voting, and, and is it a requirement for us as Christians? Well, I mean, pretty much where we look to answer any question really is we need to look first at, does Scripture say anything about it? And so let's first just ask the question, does God command us explicitly anywhere to vote? And the answer to that is no. There is no explicit command to vote in Scripture. What about Joshua? Choose this day whom you will serve. Uh, I don't think that's a, a call to is vote. Is that out of context? I okay. think that's a, you should worship only God, which is not necessarily the same question as who you should vote okay. for. Okay, 10 out of 10 would recommend worshiping God. Good, totally, go on. Totally recommend it. And the fact that voting isn't in the Bible kind of makes sense because no one that the Bible was written to, the original audience, none of them could vote. And so there was voting was not really a thing among these people. And so it makes sense that they weren't being told they have to vote. Yep. Also, there are even Christians today that don't have the right to vote. And so if there was a universal command to vote when people don't have the ability to, that seems kind of a, a difficulty there would be if, if that was an explicit command. For sure, for sure. Yeah. So so you're, you're approaching, as, as any ethical issue, the first question is, does the Bible say explicitly yes or no to this action? Right. And like so many things in our lives, there's not a clear command for this. So we're going to have to look at principles of how do we, how do we approach right. uh, government and voting. So where would you go next? Yeah, so basically let's look for some principles about what the Bible says about how Christians should relate to the government because that is kind of what voting is in the realm of. It's our relationship to the governing authorities. And so if we look throughout Scripture, there's a handful of different principles. Um, for instance, probably the most notable one is that we are told to submit to our governing authorities. So if you turn to Romans 13 or 1 Peter 2, both of those chapters have a section in there which say that we need to submit to our governing authorities. Um, another passage that might be relevant is in 1 Timothy 2, which tells us to pray for our leaders and hope that things are well with them so that we can live a dignified life, yep. is what it says in 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. And then another broad principle in Scripture about how we should relate to government and to society is that we should be seeking to do good and to be good citizens who live in an upright way so that people, when they see how we live, they, they think they live well. And that must reflect somehow on, on their belief and on who God is. Yeah. And so a passage I, I think would be good to read in full to kind of see a lot of these principles together is in First Peter chapter 2. Um, first Peter two, eleven to 17. So I'll read this for us. It says, beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which, which wage war against your soul. 
Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. And so this passage in particular is telling us to live in a way that is contributing in a positive way to society, to do good. And I should also note that what Jesus says are the most important commands that Christians should follow are one, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and two, love your neighbor as yourself. Yep. And that, I think, is particularly relevant for thinking about how we relate in society and to our government and things like that. That's good. That's good. So so we have a general, but there's no, there's no explicit command, but some general principles here to, to guide how we vote. Um, so, so connect some of the dots for us some more. Yeah. So now the next question to ask is, okay, we have these broad principles. So how does, how does voting relate to these principles? And this actually, I would say depends slightly on the context. So we're, we're Americans, we live in the United States. And so, uh, we have our own context for voting, whereas some people in another country have different voting rights and different uh, regulations relating to voting. So I wanted to bring up the example of, for instance, Australia. Australia, uh, there is a legal obligation to vote. It is uh, compulsory. You have to. And I so, didn't know that. Yeah. So I, I did some research. There's a handful of nations. It's most of the nations in Central and South America and then Australia. And then there's, I think, I want to say the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And anyways, so there's a handful of nations throughout the world that make voting compulsory and therefore if bible t if the bible tells us that we have to submit to our government and they tell us we have to vote then in that case i think yes you would have to say christians have to vote because yeah. their government tells them they have to yeah yeah so that's a contextual factor that matters but i would say we're we're in america and because of that different context we don't have to vote according to our government therefore that reasoning doesn't really apply in our context. So um, for the sake of submitting to the government, we don't have to vote. You don't have case. to vote. And I would even, you know, I, I'm sure you're going to build up to this, but I'd also say, because um, you hear so much like you have to vote, you have to vote, you have to vote. And I think there's a responsibility there that we have to carefully consider. But also there are a lot of people that I wish didn't vote because they don't know anything, right? Mm. So if your political advice comes from Taylor Swift mm. or the latest TikTok video that you've seen, you probably should not be voting. Like you're not handling that responsibility in a responsible way, I guess, right? Mm. Um, it should be taken seriously, obviously with prayer, with looking at what scripture says. We're going to do that next week as we examine the party platforms versus scripture. Um, but also just n being informed, knowing what's going on, what's actually happening, uh, are you being lied to by this candidate, things like that, right? Just basic right. things, you should be in the loop, so. Yeah, totally, that's important to know. So please don't vote, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you agree with us, obviously. <laughs> um, but I do wanna bring up a counter argument that gets brought up against this idea, or at least another consideration, and that is, if Jesus tells us we have to love our neighbor, and voting is a way that we love our neighbor, we're seeking the good of our country, then does that make voting uh, an obligation for Christians? Yeah. And so I think that is important to consider, but I think this is slightly flawed because if you said that just because it's a good thing, that means we have to do it, then you'd have to say we have to do every good thing. Well, it's not it's saying like it could be used for good, mm -hmm. right? Therefore, we have to do it. Yeah. Um, that's so it's that's too. even a step back from that, right? Yeah. And yeah, are we obligated to do every good, potentially good thing? No, right? Yeah. There's going to be certain things that we do and certain things we don't. I'm, again, I'm right. not saying this is something that I think most people can do that can lead to, to good. So it's, it's pretty easy to do. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> that doesn't mean, therefore, an obligation. 
Right. Yeah. I mean, there's an infinite number of good things to do. You could go help at the homeless shelter. You could stand outside the abortion clinic. You should, you could go, uh, serve kids at a school. You could do the list goes on and on. But the thing is we have unlimited options and limited time and resources. And so we can't do everything. And so just because we can do it doesn't mean we have to do it. And so that's an important distinction to draw. But what it makes more sense to say about voting is um, it is something that is potentially good and something that as Christians, we should take advantage of this right we have to vote and use it to the best of our ability to do good to our neighbors and to do good for our country. Um, And so it's, we can basically say we would encourage you to vote. It is a good thing and it's a way that you can contribute to the flourishing of our society and helping others. But it's going too far to say that a Christian has a moral obligation as a Christian to vote. Yeah, yeah. So if so, if someone says, "Okay, I've heard that, but I I want to take this responsibility seriously. Mm -hmm. I want to steward this well," we would commend that, right? We'd say this is a stewardship um, that you can use for good. Well, I think some basic principles, right, would be there are certain things that you should not do in voting Mm -hmm. that are really, I mean, they're so common. Voting based upon personalities. Mm. Um, based upon the feeling that someone gives you, right? You always hear this, like, would I want to drink a beer with this candidate? I don't care at (laughs) all, right? Like, I have lots of friends that I could hang out with. I don't need Kamala Harris or Donald Trump, right? Um, They're probably not my my kind of people to hang out with, most likely. Although Donald Trump seems like he'd be be kind of entertaining, so... um, And then you, you have those who are just basically saying, well, how does it benefit me personally? So maybe you're, I don't know, you're uh, a government employee and one person's guaranteeing you a raise or you're a a union worker and one person is guaranteeing more contracts to your union. I don't know. Those things are super common for people to vote on. These these really niche special interests and to ignore things like our education system and where that's headed, um, to, to look at freedom of religion, to look at just the broader economy and the debt that we have, any number of things that affect countless millions of people, uh, individuals can look and say, I'm just going to, I'm just going to vote for the thing that gives me what Mm -hmm. I want. And so we shouldn't vote like that, but we should vote in a way that is based on scripture saying, okay, what are the priorities that God has? We should vote in an informed way. And of course we should vote prayerfully as we go into the the ballot box, or if you just fill out the thing in the mail, as we put it into the mail, I guess. Yeah, uh, we're in California. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, I mean, it's like almost universal now. It seems like mail and yeah, I, stuff. Is it like half the states or something? I don't I don't know, yeah, but there's a lot of it. So, anyways. Um, yeah, so, so that, that, that's some good principles. Thanks, you, thank you, Mikey. And then next week, we're going to look at the Republican and Democratic platforms, and we will seek to step on every rake that we can possibly find. It should Spicy. be fun. So, yeah. so join us. Thanks so much for watching this video. We're uploading great biblical content every single week, so make sure you subscribe, like this video, and leave a comment down below. We'd love to discuss with you. If you want to support us financially, there's a link in the description of this video. Thanks so much.